We're shaking, folks. Back with another reaction. Back with some more Morton Harkett. And we're going back to his 1996 Norwegian language album, Vogue's Villa. And the next tune, according to Google Translate, translates to Lord in the Dream. Now, I get it. Uh, people have commented that he does not write these songs. He is essentially the voice for other Norwegian poets and pens. So, um, in that regard, I won't spend too much time thinking about the title, but I would just say I like the phrase. Um, I wonder, again, the preposition mostly, like Lord in the dream, it's certainly a phrase that makes grammatical sense. I feel like Lord of the dream might be a more common expression, even referring to the same concept, someone with lordly qualities in a dream, whether that be a more literal dream or, you know, a dream meaning something that you'd like to see in life and maybe one day you can get there, we'll see if it happens. So obviously dreams can be different things. Obviously, also, I won't be able to follow in the moment, but I look forward to people's comments. Let's hear how Morton sounds singing the words of another. This is Morton Harkett. The tune, at least according to Google Translate, translates to Lord in the Dream, and it's from his 1996 album, Vogue's Villa. More folksy Morton with a harmonica.
fine wine. I enjoyed it from the start, but the more it went on, the more it, uh, the full flavor of it became apparent. Um, number one, I just love the harmonica. Not all, like, I suppose there are times where I think it fits better than others, but I think this was a fantastic track. And again, Morton going folksy with harmonica and a sort of, um, what's the right word? Like, a, the verses especially, the chorus was a bit more energetic, but the verses had this, you know, real kind of quiet, intimate, sort of folk rock type of setting. Um, so I enjoyed that flavor in particular, but I also like the chorus because it, even though it was a bit more energetic and a bit more um, powerful and just loud, um, it also had a bit of tension to it. It wasn't, you know like um, upset anxiety or anything, but it, it didn't have a fully consonant and rich and euphoric feel. It had a bit of strain to it, so um, I did enjoy that as well. So overall, um, as the tune went along, I enjoyed more and more those two different parts of the tune. I also enjoyed the, again, at first it sounded like a banjo, then it maybe just sounded like someone playing an acoustic guitar, but like in a plucked fashion. Either way, um, that was a really cool element that just enhanced the folksy feel. So again, I look forward to hearing people's comments about the tune um, in terms of the themes and Lord in the Dream. Either way, um, you know, we get some great vocal moments from Morton. In particular, there was that moment where he went real sort of big, but like just very quickly and then kind of like reined it back in. Um, in that moment, it reminded me of some of the experimental flares we've gotten with Baby Aha, which, um, you know, we will go back to those demos because I, I do want to hear more of the early formative stages, but, um, yeah, it might not have been, you know, on that level of, um, eccentricity or audacity, but it just, you know, in that moment, it shows that he could really, like, unfurl some vocal power quickly um so yeah i like the way that one you know took me by surprise but then he quickly um brought it back down again so another cool tune not sure what it's about but as people keep saying and i agree whether it's with morton here or with marie Fredriksson singing swedish if you really like a voice it doesn't so much matter um what they're singing it's just a joy to listen to um, on a more general musical level, and I do agree. So, shout out to Morton, shout out to all those who've been following the reactions, including those in a language they may not understand. So, big ups to all of you. Let me know what you think of this. I will see you next time. Peace.